Brought to you by COPUSA. I am your host, Nina H. I want to welcome all of you, all of you once again. This is my favorite time of the year. I love teaching your precious children the true meaning of Christmas. I am so privileged to work with such a wonderful children and amazing family. As we prepare for Christmas, our Bible lessons and focus have shifted to the birth of our Savior, Jesus. We are all so thankful that God loved us so much that he sent his only son as a little baby to save us from our sins. God is truly amazing, and we celebrate his gift of love this Christmas. Precious ones, we want all of you to grab a seat and let's have some fun. We are going to learn about the birth of Christ. It is not only about toys. Christmas is not only about toys and Santa, but we are going to learn this whole month of December, we are going to learn the true meaning of Christmas, the true meaning of Christmas. We have precious ones that have zoomed in and are here with me this afternoon. And I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves. And after that, we will go ahead and learn our memory verse for the week. So we'll start with the first person. Hello, my name is Benedict Yabar from the Cincinnati district. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Afford from Cleveland district. Hi, my name is Darren Afford from Cleveland district. Hello, my name is Janelle Piaminka from Dallas District, Greater Grace. Hello, my name is Shawnee Piaminka, and I am also from Dallas District. You are all welcome, precious ones. You are all welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. We love all of you. This afternoon, we're going to go ahead and we are going to learn our memory verse for the month, for the week. Our memory verse for the week. So. Today, our memory verse will be taken from Luke. Luke chapter one, verse 28. Luke chapter one, verse 28. And I read, the angel went to her and said, greetings to you. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you, amen. Amen. I want us to say it together. So our memory verse is Luke chapter 1, verse 28. Let's say it together. Luke chapter 1, one verse 28. 28. The angel, angel went, went to her and said, Greetings, greetings. you are our highly favored. The, the, the Lord is with you. With Amen. Amen. Amen, precious ones. Amen. God richly bless you. So, precious ones, we have said that um, in my introduction, I did say that um, the month of December will be talking about the birth of Christ. In the month of December, we'll be talking about the birth of Christ. And um, one of our subtopic for today that we'll be looking at is Gabriel who visits Mary, Gabriel, who visited Mary. So Gabriel visited Mary. Somebody will ask, who is Gabriel? 
We know a lot of people call Gabriel, right? So who is actually Gabriel? And we will get to know that when we read further. And so our story today will be found in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. And that is the birth of Christ. The birth of Christ. So precious ones, I want you to grab your Bible and we are going to um, read. But before that, Janelle, open your Bible to Luke chapter 1. Um, if you do have one, do you have a Bible there, Janelle? Yes. Can I? Okay, so you can, you can, who, Sean, you wanted to read? Yeah. Okay, sure. So give me a minute here and then, but open your Bible to Luke chapter 1. Mm -hmm. 26. It's Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. So we want you to open it and get it ready. 26 to 28, right? Yeah. So okay. um, yeah. yeah, get ready. And then mm -hmm. I'll call you to read that. So precious ones, many years ago in Galilee, in a town called Nazareth, um, there's, there lived a young woman named Mary, right? She was about to be married. But as we all know, during those days, it was customary for girls to be promised to be given away to a young man as a bride as soon as they reached the age to be married. And the custom called it that those years back, like now we relate it as engagement, right? So the girl's parent had a lot to do with these decisions. And not like today where a man and a woman decide if they want to get married without the permission of their parent and go ahead quick doesn't happen much. Uh, it doesn't happen in the church that we find ourselves in. Parent, both parents have to give you their blessings before you can get married, just as what um, um, happened in, in the story of Mary and Joseph, right? So she also had um, a strange visitor um, just before she, she was about to be married. And this visitor gave her a good news. She was given a good news that was not only surprising, but it turned out to be a good news for all ages to come. Just as today we sit here and we are going to share the story and also to learn from that. So our story today, um, as we said, what can be found in Luke chapter one, verse 26 to 28. And Sean, you can go ahead and read for us. Luke chapter one, verse 26 to 28. Reading from the NIV version. In the sixth, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. Verse 27, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28, the angel went to her and said, greetings, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Amen. Amen. Fantastic reading. Fantastic reading, Sean. Fantastic reading. God richly bless you. Now. Precious ones, I have a question for you guys. Does anyone know the significance of Gabriel's visit being on the sixth month? Does anyone know the significance of Gabriel's visit being on the sixth month? Yes, Benedict. Well, it maybe had to do with one, usually when when God when God gives gives um like a woman her child like usually it's around the sixth month when a woman becomes pregnant and um I says here Gabriel also visited Zachariah before the birth of John who was a pre priest prophet of the Most High in the sixth month too so even some foreshadowing or foretelling there. God bless you. Great contribution. Who else want to try? Yes, um, Darren. Ryan says it's going to be very short. 
And what I'm going to say is that when you read the Bible, you realize that um, it was just five months. Well, the five months. The Bible says that then um, Zacharias because blah, blah, blah. Soon afterwards, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. That was in Luke chapter 1, verse 24. So that, that means that just one month after the, um, Elizabeth had finished going to seclusion, then Gabriel came and said, you two, you are going to have a, a child, Mary. God bless you. God bless you for your contribution. Uh, Declan, you have something to say before I go on? Anyone's hand is up again? No. Okay. So we we can also say that when you read um when you get a time you can read Luke chapter 1 verse 5 to 25 when you get a time at home try and go through um that scripture and pretty much gives you the background information when Gabriel also visited um Zechariah before the birth of 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 John the Baptist uh who was pretty much to be the prophet of the most high right he was the forerunner of Jesus, right? But remember, Elizabeth and Mary are family members, right? If you go back to we realize that when Mary had the news and went to visit Elizabeth, the baby in her womb leaped, right? And when Elizabeth delivered, there came what? John the Baptist, right? So you can see that Jesus our Lord and Savior is related to John the Baptist. And Zacharias' wife was Elizabeth, right? Who thought that John the Baptist will never, like when the, when the promises of God came upon them, he thought that what well, it, it cannot happen, right? But when you read the story, Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 25, you will love it. So take time and read that and get the background information and you understand the whole picture, the whole story itself. That will be your assignment, okay? And, and when John the Baptist was born, remember that Elizabeth, who was also Mary's cousin, right? That was Mary's cousin. John needed to be born before Jesus so that, so that what? Who can tell us? Why did John the Baptist have to be born before Jesus came? Yes, um... Um, Benedict. Because John the Baptist was the one who was going to baptize Jesus Christ. So in short terms, he was going to make the way for Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Great question um, answer. God richly bless you. Now let's look at um, another question I have here. How did Mary react? How did Mary react when Gabriel greeted her? How did she react? How did she react? I'm looking for someone who has not spoken. Yes, Declan. He was troubled at his greeting. At his we can't hear you. He was troubled at his greeting. As he says in Luke chapter 1, the verse 29. Mary was greatly troubled as his wife and wondered what kind of greeting this would be. Amen. Amen. So she was troubled at the greetings. Precious ones. Just imagine, right? You being at home or we being here and an angel of the Lord appears to us and, and saying, hey, I greet you all in the name of, I'm sure that we'll be like, okay, right? We'll be, we'll be surprised, right? Some will be curious to kind of find out what I might say, like, okay, who is this person? Some of you two may run, right? And then some, some, some of you too may be like, okay, this is the angel. Everybody may take it in a different way. In the case of Mary, Mary was troubled, right? Mary was troubled. Yes, um, Janelle, this is gonna be your question. Okay, um, Darren before, yeah, Darren. I thought Mary was troubled that um, um, Gabriel's greeting was because I think probably at five months, Mary was the cousin of Elizabeth or Zachariah. Well, she was the cousin of one of them. So I'm, I'm sure that he knew that Zachariah must have been um, 
mute and that was because of an angel so when you when mary saw an angel it's like hey is it because of Zach, what zachariah did okay i guess that we are all dead dead then because after what zachariah did you were you were certain you were saying that you were disbelieving god basically you were a priest and you were disbelieving god so i'm not sure that god would have been very happy with that so i think that was one reason why mary felt troubled okay God bless you for your great contribution. But um, just to clear the air a little bit, Elizabeth here, they say that Zachariah's wife, Zachariah's wife was named Elizabeth, right? Who was also what? Mary's cousin. So Mary's cousin is Elizabeth. They are cousins. Mary and Elizabeth are cousins. And is Elizabeth's husband at that time was the career, okay? Yeah, God bless you for great contribution. Now, we come to Janelle. Janelle, um, your, your question, okay? So get ready for me. So after telling Mary not to be afraid, what was the good news that Mary received from Angel Gabriel? After telling Mary, because remember, Mary looked troubled, right? So after telling Mary not to be afraid by Angel Gabriel, what was the good news that Mary received from this wonderful angel? Um, that <clears throat> that she would be giving birth to Jesus and that um, she has found favor before God. She'll be giving birth to Jesus and she has found favor before God. Fantastic answer. God richly bless you, Janelle. Yes, who have a different question, um, a different answer from Janelle? A different question from, yes, Declan. In the second part of the verse, it also says that she will give birth to a son named Jesus and he will be great and be called the son of the Most High. So that's basically what, in the, sec what the second part said. Thank you. God bless you. Fantastic. Amen. Also, um, Declan also want to say that what to add to what Janelle ha had said earlier, that what well, she will give birth to a son named Jesus. He would be great and call the son of the world and will be called the son of the most high God. Fantastic. God bless you. Now, Sean, why was Mary chosen to be the mother of Jesus? Do you know why? Why was she? There are a lot of women. There were a lot of girls at that time, right? But why Mary? Why was Mary the luckiest girl at that time? to be chosen, to be the mother of Jesus. Yes, Sean. What was the question again? Why was Mary chosen to be the mother of Jesus? Why was she chosen? Because remember, at that time, there were a lot of ladies, right? But why Mary? Why was Mary the only one that had to be the mother of the savior that would be born? Why? Because um, Mary was different because uh, she was um, very obedient. Um, she, um, what's the name? she found favor before God. She found favor before God. She found favor favor before God. We're going to rest, stop right there and discuss finding favor before God, right? What are some of the things that we precious ones that we do that will help us, that will cause us to find favor before God? Yeah, it's Benedict. I think it's Praying and le reading our Bible strengthens our relationship and makes God look down upon us. Reading our Bibles and praying to God all the time will get us closer to him and we can find favor before God. 
Great answer. God bless you. Who else? Yes, Darren. And then we go to Declan. I think the one way we can find favor with God is by, well, obeying everything everything is, he, he says and trying our best to, to do everything he says. Because when we do that, then we are sharing that God will keep on looking down upon us like Job. Because it isn't, it isn't, if you look at Job, one person the entire world, one person, one person, that means that God knew what he was doing. He realized that Job was faithful at all times. So he was able to boast about him to the devil. Flavor. I agree. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Amazing answer. Yes, Declan. And um, one way that we can find favor in, with between God is when we obey before God. Before we, God, yeah. It's when we obey God. When she says something, we we do what he says instead of doing the opposite. When we we when we are obedient to God. We will find favor before God. Yes, Janelle. Fantastic. God bless you, uh, Declan. Um, I think what makes God happy with you is like when you, when you like show Him love and respect and obey Him. Like that means following like the Ten Commandments and not letting <clears throat> anything discourage you. Not letting anything discourage you. Being what obedient. You have said it all. God bless you, Janelle. Fantastic. God richly bless you. So we find in favor before God, pretty much. We have to do what the Bible tells us to do. Like, like the right, like the Ten Commandments, that shall not like, that shall not steal. Things that what we do, right, will separate us or make us draw far from God. We do not have to do those things, right? But rather, we being obedient and doing what is right before what? God, not what is right before man. Doing what is right before God, right? Because I believe that when your relationship with God is right, it will reflect for people to see. But if you always want to please man, for how long will you continue to please man, right? You'll get tired on the way, right? But if you be yourself and read your Bible and pray, and then I love always, 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 always I love um, the, the phrase that um, Benedict um, said one time, and that, 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 that phrase or sentence or statement has stuck with me up to now. We always doing the walking the talk, not only what, do the talking, but we need to walk the talk. What we say, we have to what actually do it, right? If we, we, we say it and we don't do it, then who are we deceiving, right? So uh, my prayer this afternoon is that as we celebrate, as we celebrate Christmas, as we are in the mood of celebrating Jesus Christ, celebrating his birth, our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to know that what Mary found favor before God. And that is why she was made the one to be the mother of the savior of the world. My prayer is that one day when God wants to use any vessel to bless the home, to bless somebody in school, to bless someone in the church, to even use or pass on message or, or a revelation or some, God will use us, will use you precious ones. You, do you believe that? Do you believe that God can use you to bring his word, his message to the church, to the people in school, to anyone that God want to what, want to use, right? Because if we are obedient to him, his favor will come upon us. We will find favor before God. And when we find favor before God, then God will be able to use us anyhow he wants to use us. Just as what Mary found favor and she was used to be what? To be the mother of the savior of the world. God richly bless all of us. God richly bless her. Amen. Now, we'll go on with the next question. Now, Sean, 
Okay, I asked Sean a question, right? The next question, I'll put it on the floor. God was pleased um, when Mary surrounded, how do I put it? I don't want to confuse you. So let me kind of put it again. So God was pleased when Mary pretty much surrounded to his will, right? Or surrounded to his will, like I surrender to you, right? So God was pleased when Mary yielded or agreed to his will, right? And became obedient to him, right? Now, what other characteristics do you think Mary may have had that was so pleasing to God, right? What other things do you think that Mary had or had so that he was able to, or his ways on, she being Mary, her life and everything, what are some of the attributes, let's use attributes or characteristics that she exhibited that made it pleasing to God? Who wants to try on that? Sorry, because I need to explain that so that I'll make it clear. Um, we'll go to Declan and then come to Benedict. The one way that's my... Mary was pleasing to God or in Mary's characteristic was that first of all she was obedient because when you start down your life it's like you're obeying what the person you to the person you are sending your life to. So that means that Mary was obedient to God. Amen. Mary was obedient to God. Mary was obedient to God. Who else? Yes, Benedict. Mary was humble before God and put herself below others so that God would be able to use her to do his works. Amen. Amen. So first one, God bless you, Declan and Benedict. So uh, we, had, we had obedient and we've had, uh, we've also heard from Benedict about um, humbleness, right? Humble and obedience. Who else? Who also wanna, yes, you, you can add more if you want to, um, there on. I wanted to say that Mary was very, very respectful to God and the angel because from the way you will walk from her tone, you can tell that she had grown up very well mannered and that everything she said, all of it, they were carefully said, spoken because look at Zachariah, for instance, the way he spoke, he made the angel angry so much that he muted the person. So what um, I, so what I think was a characteristic that also set Mary apart was her respectfulness. Because you think that, okay, I'm going to give birth to the sun, then that means that no angel can touch me. If the sun is coming to me, I don't want to touch me. Okay, God bless you, God bless you. Now, another question. How about you? In what ways can you be pleasing to God? In what way can you, Sean, Janelle, Darren, Declan, Nina, Benedict, how can we be what pleasing to God? Yes, Janelle. Um, I think to be um obedient to God, you can like be willing to help spread his word and um act right so so he will love you okay god bless you when you say obedience can you break it down what what will you do that you think you are what will be the act that will say that you are obedient to god what will you do break it down yes janelle um, I think what it means to be obedient to God is like worshiping him. Let me him. give you an example. Uh, yeah, worshiping him. You know, I, I always try to use the Ten Commandments, right? So the yeah. law is telling us that shall not steal. So here, when you say obedient, then you mean you what you 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 mean is that you won't steal. So if you are not stealing, then you are being obedient, right? Yeah. Okay, God richly bless you. Fantastic. Be being obedient. God richly bless you. Yes, who else? Uh, Declan. 
Well, you can be pleasing to God by trusting your parents and of course God. Because when you trust your parents, you know, my father always tells me that they know they have they have been in our life, they are in our yes. <laughs> so my dad, so at first I didn't understand what he meant, but then but then when you think about it, it's like they have been where you are before. So basically they know what you should do, they know the right thing you should do. So when you're obedient, you should or when you trust them, they will lead you to their to what to their destination or to the correct. God bless you. Trusting our parent. Trusting our parent. Some precious ones trust their friends than their parents. But remember, it is God that placed you in the hands of your parents. God will speak to them, to you. Therefore, when our parents advise us, we should take it. We shouldn't think that what they are telling us is wrong and what our friends are telling us are the right ones. Being obedient by trusting our parents, it is very important. Declan, God richly bless you. Yes, um, Benedict. I just want to say, like, one way that like, we can, like, be, like, like, what you told us, one way is not being one of those lazy Christians. The ones who actually, oh, when they go home, they pray to God, they open the Bible, and they read. Not like, I'm going to go to church, like, hey, I do not know how to open. How do you open the Bible? How do you pray? Like, don't be the person who just does not have any clue and also not willing to learn. God helps the ones who help, them so help themselves. So, in order for God to draw near to you, you have to do your part. Amen. Amen. Having a unique relationship with God, reading your Bible, speaking to him, not being a Christian that do not really know what you're about, right? You wait till only children's ministry time week to celebrate. Then you learn your memory verse, and then you go recite it. And after that, you don't go back to it till next year. You even go to Sunday school, you don't have your Bibles, you just go. You said, oh, I'm going to use my phone. But you go and when teacher is talking, you're already on YouTube, right? You think you're on the Bible side, the Holy Bible side, but no. So they are using their phones, but they're on the other side of where they're supposed to be. Uh, Benedict is letting us know that be who you are. Be truthful to yourself by doing what is right. By doing what is right. God richly bless all of us. Yes, Benedict. I also want to say that's another way some that the devil uses um some people to really draw Christians into his grasp. Like he brings out those lazy people who do nothing, just sit there. And if God really doesn't call you to save them, he just uses them like as like bait, like guilt trap, guilt. That's how that's what I'm trying to think. Guilt traps. Like make them look innocent and all that stuff and make them like look clueless. And the devil brings them in and then this like they sit on your shoulders while you're doing the walking. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So um this what this question was related to us. We, how about us? In what ways can we be pleasing to God? Right? And we've said a lot. In what ways can we? I mean, in what ways can your friends be pleasing to God? Or your parent be pleasing to God? So now we said, first we said about ourselves, right? Now, in what ways can your friends? People always say that, oh, this kid, she's so humble. You so this, you, you that, you love God, you pray a lot, and then your friend, is always getting in trouble all the time. But you all go to the same Sunday school, right? Even in Sunday school, we do have kids that when the teacher is talking, they are also talking and then you have other children that are listening, right? So let's relate that. Let's bring it to our daily children's ministry. In children's ministry, when you go to church, in the children's ministry, how can our friends be pleasing to God? Yes, Darren. I'd say that since, well, I'm old and like my friends, they are, most of them are old. I mean, I'd say that all of them, they do extremely well, except sometimes, you know how the phone thing, YouTube and everything, a lot of my friends, like they have phones and everything. So sometimes they can get distracted because when you go, then you see this 
wow, this this thing this thing pops up, and then all of a sudden they start getting distracted, and then they speak to other people about it. They get distracted. So what me I think they can be pleasing to God is take away the distractions. My dad said that when you're in school, it's you don't you don't want to have your phone with you because you do that it, it can become a huge distractor. So if your phone is a distraction in church, then in fact don't bring it with you because some my, when my dad and when my mom and dad when we are doing like devotions or something like that, they always send their phone off. Sometimes they don't even bring it with them because it can become a distraction. Like, oh yes, I have to do this call. Then they end up doing this mini calls. Then what was supposed to be a devotion became work. God bless you. God richly bless you. Thank you. Great um, contribution. Who else? Who else? Yes, um, Declan. Well, the one thing, one way that they can be pleasing to God is one day, even if they are not uh, godly or godly, even if they're the right thing, even if it causes them trouble, like you share, uh, you share their person needs something, but then you give them something, but then you know that you need that thing for work or an assignment in school. God bless you. God bless you, um, Declane, and Benedict, and then uh, Janelle. So one way we and also our friends and also like be pleasing to God is also make good friends around the Christian area that are actually and also not just around the Christian area make friends that are also better than you the reason being is because making friends that are better than you you can ask them congregate and then make exchange skills like help each other out like the, hey this one person you're like oh you're up here and I'm down here like right here and then I start with this map home. Hey, can you help me out? Like, oh, sure, yeah. And then you slowly start to climb to their level and even go higher. So what you got to do is make good friends. For your friends, you and your friends have to make better friends that are in that good area. Don't be making friends with a class clown. Not make yourself like that class clown. Yeah. Always get in with the popular flow. Benedict is letting us know that sometimes we need to make right decisions for ourselves so that we can be pleasing to God. Do not follow the cloud. If you know that um, um, it, it, uh, it's not, if the crowd where you are following, when you're following the crowd and you know where you're going is not the right way, don't don't even follow to get in trouble. Don't follow because that can lead you not to be pleasing to God. It will stop God from all you will. It will prevent your relationship with God. And you may not find what favor before God, right? So these are some of the little things or these are things, few things that we need to be mindful of. Yes, Janelle. And then I'll come back to you. Um, Daryl. Um, like if let's say your friends aren't really um being obedient to God, like stealing and lying, then you can like as a Christian child, you can help them or encourage them to be obedient to God and like um respect his word. Fantastic. Helping your friends gather, helping your friends to also live a life that is pleasing to God. That is also very, very important. It doesn't have to be only you. Sometimes God places our um, places our friends in our lives so that we can impact in their life. There are people that no matter what you do for them will still say negative things about you. But if you know what you are doing is right, Keep doing it and keep praying for them. There's a reason why you are friends with that person. There is a reason. So you need, as a precious one, you need to pray for them and also tag them with you. But if you know what they are doing is wrong, you can also talk to your friend that, do you know that 
Jesus loves us. And some of these things, when we do, um, it will not work. The, the favor of God won't find favor before God because these are some of the things that Mary did. And then what? Um, she was appointed to be the mother of Jesus. And as precious ones, we need to be obedient. We need to be humble. We need to pray uh, and, and read our Bibles every day. You kind of speak and let them know the things that when we do and we follow, will we'll, our lives will be pleasing to God, okay? God richly bless you. Yes, Darren. It's not like thing that we could do to make uh, our lives pleasing to God is to do everything well. Like if God were to tell us to share we would, uh, share everything we've got we, and we share half of it, then we would have, wouldn't have followed this orders. Because Moses, like Moses, the, one of the greatest prophets, he didn't enter the promised land all because God told him to speak to a rock and he hit it two times instead. Yes, the miracle happened. Everything went well, half fine. But still, he couldn't enter the promised land all because of that one sin. So when we do something, we should make sure to do it well and right and do it in a way that would make God happy. Because if God were to say share and you were like, to share to some someone who is less fortunate you were to go and you were to go and say, here, take. The, the, what the meaning, yes, the heart won't be in it. But if you were to go and say, here, you doing all right, can you please like have this to make you better or something? To make you better the person will feel much more happier and in fact the thought alone would make the person happy amen amen and amen and amen god richly bless you there on god richly bless you so precious ones um my last question okay Declan, you can go your hand is up so what i wanted to say was that in second if you're a good person, well, you also will be, you also will like, will be a part of them. You slowly by slowly be going to the other side once you are leaving your, your Christian side. So that's what it's meant. So, God richly bless you. You pretty much um what your contribution um answered the next question that I wanted to ask, but I'll still ask it for others to also um uh, kind of contribute. Well, well, for others to also contribute to that. Will others see you as a good person with these characteristics? Remember, we've talked about our life, uh, Mary's life was pleasing to God, right? And then we talked about in what ways can our lives be pleasing to God, right? And now my last question is that, will other people see you as a good person with these characteristics? When I come to Benedict's house right now, will his grandma be able to tell me some of these characteristics from Benedict? When I come to the Ofori family, when I come to the uh, Apia Minka family, will I, will their parent be able to tell me that, oh, as for John, as for Benedict, as for um, Janelle and Declan and, and, and Dawn and, and Darren, these characteristics, oh, they have them. Can someone looking at us from a distance when they see us. And that's when what I said earlier about what walk the talk comes in. Would they be able to say that? Yes, Nina is obedient. Benedict is a very obedient child, very humble, very loving and caring. Yes, um, Benedict. And then we go to Darren. Well, sometimes for most people, it really depends on what environment you're like in. And well, let me elaborate on environment a little bit. Like, you know how we're talking about friends? This is one of my different groups of friends. Like, we got the bad kids, we got the good kids, we got the smart people. And all type of the environments, when, when I look at someone, before I go making friends or stuff, you got to look at someone from a distance. Like, 
what group of people are they hanging out with? Like, are they hanging out with the bad kids, smart kids, good kids? What type of people are they hanging out with? Then you go deeper in and look like, okay, um, this person, uh, he likes the game. He reads his Bible every day. He prays. Hmm. Maybe I should, like, ask him if he wants to be my friend or, like, we could do a homework assignment together or something like that. Like, to see, to see if someone's a really good person, you really have to look at what environment and what they are in, especially as you get older. Because when, when you hit 18, like in high school, definitely, people there are going to be lots of bad people, like people in gangs and all the bad people and stuff, like really not doing what they're really supposed to be doing. And later in their life, really going to just die and end up in hell. So before you make friends, and really how people tell, is they look from the outside and see what environment you're hanging out with. It's usually people's first instincts. God bless you. Thank you. I'm um, Darren. I think that it's all, it's a, yes, people, depending on the person who ask, you ask that, because if you were to ask some family member who, re, like your, the person's mom and dad who care about their son the most, they'd probably, no matter how bad, the person may be in the gang, but they won't mention it. They only say the good parts like, oh, you mean my dear, handsome, beautiful, she's very <laughs> smart child. Yes, well, sometimes he gets into sin and all and stuff like that, but still, he's good. He's good. He has a good heart. But go and ask this guy, the someone who hates the person, be like, You mean the guy who touched my house last night? <laughs> you see, so it all depends on the person you ask. But sometimes mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, so, but sometimes if you don't ask the person and you see for yourself, that is basically how you see someone's true color. Because if you were to see the person going into this dark alley and then you were to hear another pass by screaming like, ah, and, every, and things like that, it would be different from you seeing him go, walking with his Bible and praying. Because mm -hmm. then you'd, you'd be able to make up your mind that he's a Christian rather than him going into a dark alley and beating up people. God bless you. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, um, Declan. So what I wanted to say is that, uh, yes, people would be able to tell your, how their characteristics that you have either that they are good or, or not good. So this is what I mean. So an example is that when, like one day right after the church, uh, we went to Walmart and then somebody just came like this. You see, oh, I see, nice Justin. I think I can see that you went straight from church. So they were able to know suddenly that you were, just straight from church. So that's a sound. So if they are able to see them because of the dressing that you are wearing, then they'll be able to see the type of people that you are. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless. Great contributions. God richly bless all of you. Precious ones at home and those that just joined us. Um, today, our lesson uh, can be found in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. And we... Um, been talking about or oh, the topic is um gabriel visited mary gabriel visit mary or visited mary and um um under that we have the birth of christ the birth of christ the whole month of december we will be talking about the birth of christ i love this topic so much because in december we get to 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 celebrate our um, our, uh, the only son that God sent to this world for us, the gift that we need to celebrate every year and every day of our lives and say, having the attitude of gratitude to say thank you to Jesus for bringing his only son to this world for us. Um, so we have been talking, um, discussing about the birth of Christ and um, the visit of uh, Gabriel visiting Mary, how the first time uh, Mary was troubled and pretty much that's what we've been talking um, for the past hour. But precious ones, um, what have you learned as we bring our lesson to an end? What have you learned this afternoon? What have all of you learned? Let's share with our friends that just joined us late. Let's share with them and then we'll bring our lesson to an end and then we'll continue God willing next week. So, Benedict, what have you learned? I've learned, I've learned about um, the, the, um, the events that led up to 
the um, Jesus birth and how John the Baptist had to come and had to come before Jesus to pave a way so he could get baptized. Amen. 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 Um, Darren, what have you learned? What I learned is that Christmas is a story about the the Son of God. But before he even be, gets born and everything, there were a lot of things that unfold for him to come to the end, such as John the Baptist coming, Zachariah becoming mute, and Elizabeth also having to give birth to John the Baptist, as I said earlier, and everything such as that. But really, what it took, uh, it took a lot of things to qualify to become the son, the mother of Jesus. Jesus or the cousin of Jesus because Zachariah was a high priest was one of a one was a priest so he so for him to get mute it was a very hard thing and that means that he basically failed the test so if it wasn't for the fact that he was Mary I don't think that Zachariah would have been the one giving birth to um John the Baptist God bless you yes um Declan and then we come to Sean so what I learned is that you, as if you're a true Christian, then other people should be able to see your true appearances or your personality or your characteristics. Uh, but other people should see that you are a true Christian and you should always, and you should always be very pleasing to God. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Sean, what have you learned this afternoon? You muted, Sean. We can't hear you, Sean. Okay, let's go to Janelle and come back to Sean. What What I learned is um, that when you are when you go if you go to church, then you have to act well because then everyone's going to be seeing your appearance as a nice church girl. But if they see you doing something bad. Um, they're not going to be happy because they know that you go to church, yet you're doing something bad. So, yeah. Okay. God richly bless all of us. God bless all of us. There are many words when it comes to pleasing to God. The meaning of pleasing to God, it comes in so many um, 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 it has so many meanings or similar meanings. And this afternoon we have learned other meanings or things that characteristics that when we we uh when we say that pleasing to God, what are some of the things that when we do are uh, pleasing to God? We have talked about that, we've discussed. Um, I remember um few of you talking about uh being humble, um being obedient, uh, reading our Bibles, um, and, and praying to God. Our, our holiness, righteousness, uh, being an upright person, and all these are good, but a person who is pleasing to God um, and also pleasing to others can be used in a very mighty way, in a very mighty way. So my prayer this afternoon to all of us um, will be that our lives will be pleasing to God so that God will use us in our families, in the church we find ourselves in, in the country, in the neighborhood, in the state you find yourself in. Um, that is how God uses Mary, used Mary above all the other virgins to be that Mary to um, uh, other virgins to be that what? Mary was the only person that found favor before God to be the mother of um, his only son. How wonderful is that? God richly bless all of us and our precious ones at home. We want you to read Luke chapter one, verse five to 25, read it and it will give you a, whole, a long background about what we've been, we've started talking about the birth of Christ. God richly bless all of you. Um, may the Lord keep you safe. May the Lord's hands um, uh, cover you and, and shield you throughout school week. May he grant you wisdom and knowledge. May he bless your family as we meet, as we go through the week and until we meet again next week. May the Lord bless us all in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. We love you all and we will see you. Bye. We love you all. Bye. Bye.